going on everybody and welcome back to the channel now today we've got the australia versus pakistan third test match review now look i didn't review how many i don't think i think i did maybe one day review out of this entire third test match um look i just assumed this match was going to be a draw to be dead honest with you uh but we get the win, Australia. We have a famous victory in Pakistan. The first win that we've had in Pakistan since 1432, I think. So, you know, this is a great win. And it just proves to us that we can play in Asian... Like, we can play in Asian conditions. We can play overseas. We can play on flat decks. We can play on spinning decks. And, I, you know, the narrative around Australia and touring overseas into subcontinent is always been, oh, they don't play spin very well, or they don't know how to play slow pitches... The spin just got them, which was true, you know, back in early 90s, even early 2000s with guys like, you know, Warney, of course, rest in peace, uh, Ricky Pot. well, he wasn't batting, but I just wanted to mention Warney, um, but, you know, Ricky Ponting, Gilchrist, Matthew Hayden, Langer, like, all of those guys, all, you know, in the subcontinent, always had trouble with spin, and it was always the thing that spin was always the undoing for Australia overseas, and, you know, those, you know, th those... 120k deliveries that just swing at a whole amount, um, you know, a bit of reverse, was always something that you don't really get in Australian conditions. So it's always been a tough task to go overseas and get not just a, a win, but to get out of it with a series win. I mean, <laughs> we are laughing all the way to the bank. So yes, I did. I know, I know the test match finished like almost 48 hours ago. But look, it, it was a weekend, I was, you know, I had stuff on, so here we are, finally getting to it. Uh, you know, I was I was obviously watching it, but, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on that night. Uh, there was, if you don't know the sport AFL, some pretty historic stuff happened in that, so, you know, I was keeping my eye on that. But, player of the series, the man Uzi Kawaja, I mean, in his home country, well, yeah, in his first, second home, no, first home country, he was born in Pakistan, right? Yeah, I think so. He was born there. So, look, in his home... Is he the first player to ever win player of the series in... Oh, actually, hold on. I'm trying to think of a statistic. Is Usman Khawaja the f first guy to ever win player of the series in Australia and in Pakistan? I don't know if he's actually won player of the series in Australia before, now that I think about it, but... Um, I'll edit that out. That was... Yeah. My bad. I forgot. Hey, player of the match was Pat Cummins. I mean, he was superb. He's the only reason that we won that test match on day five. He's the great, the best bowler in the world, the best test bowler in the world. He is phenomenal. He is our captain, and I love you very much, Mr. Pat Cummins, so thank you very much. Hey, let's jump into the scorecard. Um, let's go where pretty much, you know, we'll go over the last day in a little bit. I just want to, you know, get into it here. So, look, you know, we had a first innings, 391, bowled them out for 268. Then we came back out to bat and declared with only about a 350-odd lead. And I thought, oh, no, shit. What have you done, Pat? Oh, I was sitting there and I thought, Patrick, Patrick, what are you doing? Why the fuck would you declare this early? What are you doing? You, you declared too late in, in the second test match and now you're declaring too early? What's going on, Patrick? He made the right move, it seems, because he ended up taking about five poles. Um, you know, Warner, 51. Uzi, of course, not out. 104 is incredible. Labashane, Smitty, Hetty. Um, there's not a whole lot to talk about in that one, but we'll jump into here. So this is where the magic really just happened. I mean, Pakistan in the bat. You expect it. They're going to try and chase down 350 runs. It's pretty... I mean, on, on a flat deck like that, of course, it's achievable. Um, I mean, they were playing for the draw. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. Pakistan... Not for one moment gave any thought to, to going for a win. They just cared about a draw. And, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that this series went ahead. I'm so glad that we got to, we, we get to play test cricket in Pakistan again. But And I know that it is not the players' fault for the pitches. I mean, it's not anyone's fault except the curators, I would assume. But uh, Babra Azam, you've, like... You, I just... It's just so frustrating. This entire series, Pakistan have been scared to even have a shot at trying to win. They've been playing defensive all time. They don't even try to take wickets with the spinners. They just put it in certain areas and hope it's a dot ball. And that was the most frustrating thing. I think if Pakistan put a bit, a bit more, you know, fire into the, into the series, it would have been a lot more, you know, 
I don't want to say close, but a lot more entertaining for Pakistan fans. I mean, <laughs> other than maybe, you know, of course they love to watch Baba Azam and of course Rizwan, but there wasn't a whole lot going on for the third test match for them, which I feel for the Pakistan fans because you had to watch your team try and bat out a draw for three test matches, which is rough. Uh, Abdul Shafiq going for 27. Look, 27 off 80 is okay. Imamul Huck, 70 off 199. It... <sighs> I mean, go for it. Like, why would you not try and go for a win? Would you rather get a win or try to get the win and lose? Or would you just rather do what they did and lose no matter what? It's, yeah, frustration. Very frustrating for Baba Azam. He's a great batsman, great person, I'm sure. But I reckon it's pretty shit captaincy. And I'm not, you guys know I have no filter on this channel. I'm not going to hold back. It was shit captaincy. The entire test series, Pakistan fans should be angry at Babar Azam. I know that they won't because he's like the Sachin Tendulkar of Pakistan, but it was pretty... I don't want to say it was embarrassing, but seriously, it pissed me off. It made me very angry to see that they were going for a draw on the last day of the third test match to decide the series. It's nothing but poor. It, it, it is just sad that they wanted to go for a draw, but... I guess uh, they would rather draw than try and win, I guess. Uh, Farwad Allah. Oh, wait. Azar Az Ali going for 17. Baba Azam going for 55 off 104. He was probably... Now, to give Baba his credit, he was probably the only Pakistan batsman that actually tried to make some runs. So, I will give him that credit. He actually tried. So, what well up, Baba. <laughs> Forget what I said then. Uh, Farwad Alam um, going for 11. Rizwan going for a duck. Sajid Khan going for 21. Norman Ali not out for one. Hassan Ali going for 13. Shaheen Afridi going for five. And the man Nassim Shah bowled by Pat Cummins with one of the most beautiful deliveries you'll ever see. I mean, just Pat Cummins. Pat motherfucking Cummins. <laughs> Clap it up. Clap it up for him because he was exceptional. Let's just get into the bowlers because this is what gets me excited. Mitchell Stark, 1 for 53 off 17. What a series he has had. Seriously, you know, he's been the the, the choice bowler over, over Hazelwood, which, you know, coming into this series, I would have said, how to the F no. I would much rather play Hazelwood. But Stark, you know, with that reverse swing, he, he bowled beautifully, really, this entire series. So, again, a little clap for Mitchell Stark. Pat Cummins, uh, just... I mean, Pat Cummins, what else can you say? Three for 23. Three for... Tw okay. Three for 23. Six maidens of 15 overs. An economy of 1.5. He went at like only 21 runs the entire series. I mean, that is like ludicrous. That is one of the most craziest stats I've ever heard. That Pat Cummins, on average this series, was bowling for only like 21 runs in innings. Like, that is just absurd on these flat decks. Nathan Lyon, I mean, takes another five for what a series he's had. Um, he <laughs> Have a long rest, Gaz, and just warm up, mate, because you need to just sit down, have a few beers, watch the TV, and maybe watch some Matthew Way nice Gary highlights on YouTube for the next 10 hours. I don't know. Mitchell swept in none for 36. Look, impressive. I thought he bowled well. Um, look, is it, it, it's really tough because he's our best leg spinner at, in Australia at the moment, of course, behind me. But, yeah, for some reason, Australia doesn't pick me. I don't know why. But, yeah, mystery to me too. So, I guess Swepson is the best guy for the job at the moment. Um, you know, there's... Uh, he just is. We don't have many leg spinners coming through Australia. Um, you know, we have a lot of mystery spinners and a lot of offy spinners, but Swepo's really our only leg spinner. I mean, Zampa, obviously, but Zampa's more of a mystery spinner that, who's really good at T20, can change his variations. He's not really a test cricketer. Um, to be honest, I think Adam Zampa doesn't want to play test cricket because he, he doesn't play Sheffield Shield ever, literally almost ever. Um, and when he does, he goes out there and literally just has a bit of fun. So that's <laughs> that's why he's not getting picked for the test team. I did have a few questions uh, why Zamps wasn't picked, but yeah, that's kind of why. Cam Green, one for 18 off 11. He's a superstar. And Labashane, none for 10 off 2. I don't really think he needed the bowl, but sure. Um, so hey, Australia win a historic test match. Not only that, a test series in Pakistan, for the, again, for the first time since 19-1. So this is a big... Big moment. Of course, there is going to be a few ODIs and a few T20s um, coming up next, which I'll be covering all of those. So, you know, we'll get some more runs out of that. We'll get some more exciting cricket out of that as well. So, hey, 
excited. What a series. Well done, Uzi. Well done, Mr. Pat Cummins. Um, who else? Well done, Nathan Long. Well done to the entire Aussie squad. And uh, shout out to Alex Carey for falling in the pool. That was, you know, Alex Carey falling in the pool was probably the highlight of my series for this one. So, hey, that, <laughs> that will cap it off, guys. Let me know what you thought of the series. And, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.